Hey, what's up guys, Judgment here. This is a VOD review of my gameplay on Haven, um, where hopefully that you guys can get a little bit of an insight of how I'm thinking each round, um, why I do things the way I do them, and apply it to your own gameplay so you can get better. I'm gonna be doing this for every map I intend to, um, and I'll be in, you know, how to make certain comebacks or how to do things a certain way, just depending on whatever goes on in the game. I just wanna start doing a little bit of a series like this where you guys can apply the information that I give you guys and take it into your own game so you guys can climb on KO since everybody wants to know hey how do I climb on KO well hopefully you can watch from me and learn a thing or two on why I do things the way I do them so yeah enjoy the rest of the video it's a very long one I know but if you really do want to get better I would sit through and watch it enjoy it let me know what you think subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys around bye bye we don't have a, you can look at our team comp first. So let's talk about like team comp. Uh, Reina, Jet, Omen, Cypher, KO. KO solo initiator kind of sucks um, because you don't, you lack information. So you kind of have to like be a little bit more cautious on like certain angles. And you're actually going to see like a clip later on of like prime example of like why solo initiator sucks. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. This knife right here, literally knife out, aim at this little interior spot right here. You can see where my cursor is. Um, and it'll scan everything as you can see right there. It goes right here and then it scans anybody that pushes up short in this little spot here. So now you can know if you get a scan, then be a, be aware of like people like potentially peeking you. And if you don't get a scan, then you could just send it. Um, but do be care because they could dodge it like way up here and then shift walk up. So just make sure you're aware of this kind of stuff. So now we're on second round. Second round, I usually always buy a deagle. Um, I wouldn't recommend it if you're not like, uh, experienced player um because it's a risky buy like i only buy it because i'm confident in my aim and a deagle is like a one-shot headshot for the most part um and if not you just body shot them right after um if you do deagle buy second round it's a deagle no what no utility no anything you just buy the deagle and then the very next round you're going to be lacking in some department you're either going to be down a you're either going to be down a flash down uh molly or both sometimes you're down both but if you get a kill usually you kind of level it out you just go light armor vandal and then you can get full util um and if you don't get a kill then you can go light armor vandal and maybe you can get another flash or you can get a um a molly here um because we lost the first round i'm kind of just waiting for enemies to mess up so all i'm doing is sitting here you know on this angle posted up on garage um, just kind of waiting for the enemies to do something. Um, there's no really, because we're at like a weapon disadvantage, like you have to either do one of two things usually where you either rush a site as a group and you all just kind of throw bodies at the site and try to trade each other. Or you do this where you just default hold angles, um, and just try to get a kill. Uh, cause if you get a kill, you know, you get a specter or a marshal or whatever the enemies drop and then the, the round is more winnable. So yep, just sitting here waiting, not really doing anything. Um, my jet wants to push in the garage here, so I'm knifing close for him, so he can be aware if there's anybody close to him. And you can see that once the knife goes off, he realizes, okay, well, there's nobody here. He gets to take the space, and now he's just holding the window, trying to see what's going on. Uh, Omen spots somebody plat here. I try to, I try to get the kill here if I can. Dash left. I don't get it. Gonna grab the orb. Every time you grab orb, um good habit to turn away from the choke point so you don't get headshot um does it actually work for the most part it does i barely i rarely die when i turn um i usually grab the orb 180 and i look at the floor or look down and it makes your head not as visible to enemies versus if you were just staring straight at them so it's a good a good little trick to do whenever you're grabbing orbs now my team is pushing um my team is pushing b here you can see that they're trying to take space together here um i'm just holding garage trying to like wait for a pick to happen because i only spotted two people on site um and because the enemy team spots a bunch of us mid i can assume that somebody's gonna push either through a through c through garage or something else so me going b right now like even though my own whole team was fighting b there's not really any point in me going there because like i said if one of these guys pushes through garage or c and I'm there, I'm just going to get shot on the side of the head. So at least now, if I sit here, I, I can, yeah. you know, work a pick in case somebody does peek and get a free kill. And then we could rotate to a site. 
Um, but with that information of them fighting mid, we know that A side is pretty much open. Um, there's probably one person there and we're going to go try to rotate there and get there as fast as we can. You can see that our omen is lurking, also trying to find a pick because now that the enemies hear that we're rotating, um, this omen here is going to start lurking through. When these enemies start rotating, a lot of the time, like I said before, enemies will like to push through their, their areas because these guys are coming. Oh, they're running A, they're up short, right? So all the enemies are going to rotate. So anybody that's garage around C is going to make their push now, which is where our omen our lurker would get a free kill um, if there was anybody. So here we are making noise, we're rotating. Cypher put a cam for the flank, I'm clearing short. I should go with my team here because I have the bomb, but I do want to clear short for our team, okay? Short, 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 right. And luckily because I did go where I went, um, I get the information that there is somebody short. Um, and my Cypher does manage to get the kill. Rana swings out, I'm trying to go for the kill here. I'm trying to go for wall banks, I'm not getting it, but I did manage to get the kill. Plant the bomb, I'm planting it for long. And you can see now our omen, because nobody pushed through, now he's a, he set himself up for a free lurk. So now he gets to come behind the enemies and all Reyna and I have to do, this is Kami by the way, all Reyna and I have to do now is just wait for the enemies and stall out time for our omen to get free kills and shoot them in the back. So Kami spots one, we know one CT, he smokes heaven for me so I don't have to worry about it. Um, I go to... Prep a flash here to stall time. I hear the metal box um, and I reacted and killed that guy. Luckily, he was one to the body. Um, and I swing out wide here. Unfortunately, I die. Omen, Omen paranoias. And then Omen whiffs every shot. But hey, what can you do? It's good damage. It's our eco round. Um, so we actually did really good damage where we killed four of the enemies. Um, usually on your eco round, you want to kill as many enemies as you can to ruin their money so that they're following round they have less to work with because if all of them live this round then they all get specter and full armor and you know they're just they're kind of like chilling with their money right and then the very next round they can um they can just buy full um even if we win it with our guns but now because we killed so many of them they only had one specter to work with um and it looks like they're gonna pick up a phantom i imagine um, but because they only had one gun to work with now, um, we have the advantage because now we're going to have rifles and they're probably not going to buy this round. They're usually third round. They're going to bonus, which means that they're going to buy um, as much as they can to where they could still buy next round, like full buy next round, but um, still afford like a decent buy. So like they're probably going to go like maybe Deagle Light Armor, um, Spectre Light Armor, just something light to where they could buy. Um, but had we not done the damage that we did, they would have a lot more money to work with to where they can get full shield and now come into this next round. Um, we're at like a slight disadvantage, not really, but we're at a slight disadvantage because now they have full shield. You know, um, that's an, like a full shield to half shield difference is like somebody with our team having a phantom one shotting them from across the map. You know what I mean? Like that could be the difference maker. So basically they're just going to be weaker on their bonus round and we're going to be stronger um, you're always going to be stronger on a full buy, but we're going to be even stronger ha uh, because we did the damage, if that makes sense. That's why like on eco rounds, you kind of want to do stuff together and just try to kind of mess them up or default and wait for them to come to you guys so you guys can have a you know higher chance of winning the round, higher chance of taking more of their guns away from them. You can see that our omen has a fan or the jet had a phantom. Like if we pick that phantom up, we're going to be doing a lot of damage to their economy. Um, as well as uh, taking, you know, their, their, gun, their guns from them. Uh, sometimes duelists will like to buy like vandals on the second round. They're ruining their money. So now come to their bonus round, they're really only going to be able to buy like a deagle because they got greedy and decided to buy a vandal, if that makes sense. So. That's why this cypher says good eco because it was a good eco. We took, we did a lot of damage to their money. Now, next round, you can see because I bought the Deagle and I did manage to get a kill, I, you see a here, I can go light, I can go two flashes and a Vandal. Or I managed to go full here, actually. Did I go full? So yeah, so what I did there was I went I went Vandal, double flash, molly, light armor. And then I was like, uh, I don't really want the light armor anymore um, because I could sell my molly and buy full armor. So I bought out completely. Um, I don't, molly on KO really, honestly really isn't that strong. Um, a lot of the time, you just got to prioritize your flashes. Um, not really a point in getting molly majority of the time KO molly kind of sucks if I'm being honest Double flash here full armor and uh, Vandal is gonna be a lot better Especially with them having worse guns me going full shield is gonna be better 
because if they, you know, that could be the difference between six body shots from a Spectre killing me to three body shots from a Spectre killing me, if that makes sense. Um, I said I was going to peek the jet here. And this is a prime example of like what you don't want to do. Um, you should always press tab before going into a round to see like what money these guys have. These guys got a third round up and I instantly die. And my jet even called it before the round started. He said, be careful for a, for a op. And I troll because I'm a content creator, okay? If I swing this guy and I one tap him, it's like sick, you know what I mean? But is it a smart play? No, it's not a smart play. The smart play there would be to jump spot for info because I know that they could have an op. Same thing goes for A long. You know, jump spot, um, have a drone go first, dart it, something safe to where you can clear the angle and then go from there. And then now that you know an opera's on the angle, you guys can figure out, okay, do we want to go C? Do we want to go back to A? Because we know the opera's on C. Maybe their A setup's a little weak. And you can kind of decide what you want to do from there. Okay, so we're back on that round again where we're basically buying light. So you could see... And I want to clear up this miss... I, a lot of people that I coach have this misconception of what a light buy is. So everybody except for our omen here is on a light buy. So notice how our guns are completely different, right? We got two deagles, we got a marshal, and we have a deagle with no armor, right? So these are all light buys. Everybody on this team right now, the very next round, can guaranteeingly buy full utility, full weapon, full shield, whatever. Enough to, you know, like a full, a full buy, right? There's a common misconception with people that I coach that a specter and light armor, or a specter and full armor equals light buy. That is not what a light buy is. Just because you're buying a weaker weapon does not mean that's a light buy. If somebody has 7,000 credits on your team, right? And you have 3,000 credits, you might be able to buy a Deagle at most and still be able to buy full next round. But you're, the person with 7,000 credits can buy full shield, full utility, and a Vandal and still be able to buy the very next round. Is that a light buy? Technically, yes, because everybody else on your team is buying light. It just so happens that that one guy can buy more than you. But that's his light buy. He still is able to buy for the next round in full. Uh, Spectre light armor, Spectre, D Spectre full armor, Spectre in general, or whatever you might use, is not equal light buy. As long as your credits say that the very minimum next round that you can get is either 4,000, 4,200, or 4,500, which is like the gen it's like a general rule of thumb. Um, it, it varies from agent to agent, but generally like 4,200 credits minimum next round. And I'll show you guys where that is in case you don't know where it is. Minimum next round, 40, uh, 5,950, 5, 5, right? Um, I buy Deagle, I buy uh, Molly, and I buy Light Shield. And that brings me down. You couldn't really see it because I cut it early. But boom, boom. You can see my minimum next round going down, right? 4950 and then after the shield i'm at about 4450 credits left which allows me to buy full armor full utility and a vandal the very next round so your minimum next round generally speaking when you want it to be around 4200 to 4500 um about uh, about there nevertheless because then you want you'll lack in utility or you won't have shield or you won't be able to buy as strong of a gun so be aware of that um so yeah i just want to clear that up because a lot of people will not know what a will not know what a light buy is so yeah. So now that we're defaulting again, I go again for the knife garage hold the angle play. They do have a phoenix, and I am aware of this. Because they have a phoenix, I play anti-flash. Because phoenix players like to go for cheeky flash plays. They like to flash out of garage, flash out of mid, flash out of A main, A long, flash on C from back site, flash from back plat, wherever they want to go. So be aware of that. You don't always want to be the guy that is just running up and giving this guy free kills. That's why me, I throw a knife and instantly I'm hiding behind this wall because I'm aware that they have a Phoenix. This, you could be aware of a Phoenix, a Yoru, a Sky, anybody with a flashbang, you should be aware of common flash spots. And you, as a KO player, should know about that, about stuff like that. Think of it as yourself. If you think of it as yourself on the enemy team, you will never get blinded. Realistically, I... 
Like, I pretty rarely get blinded. Very, very rare. A lot of the time, I get blinded more by people that throw bad flashes because they're just, I just, I'm just like, what? Who throws that? Because I know myself, I would not have thrown a flash that was that bad and it ends up working on me. But if you are just aware of, you know, a Phoenix, a Sky, a KO, right? Let's say like you trap one in a corner and then you're like, oh, a Phoenix is trapped in the corner. Hmm. I wonder what he's going to do. Obviously, obviously he's going to flash you. He wants to get out of the corner and either kill you or get to safe position, right? Think of it that way. You don't want to be like ignorant to it. So yeah, anyways, here you can see I'm hiding behind the wall after I throw the knife, right? I get the scan and you can see, boom, my jet and my omen are blind. And I and I swung right after because usually after the flash, this guy's gonna want to swing. But because I knifed him, he decided to not peek it. No peek, no peek, no peek. And then here I am again, hiding, playing anti-flash yet again, waiting, jiggling. My team is hard holding it. I don't have to hold the angle because my teammates are holding it. Notice how much I press tab, by the way. Each pre-round, notice how much I press tab. I press it pretty often. Like a lot of the time, I press tab. You need to be pressing tab a lot in Valorant. And like over other like TAC FPSs, and generally speaking, I'm referring to like Counter-Strike. Valorant is very new player friendly. Very, very new player friendly. I mean, like just look at this tab. Like it tells you who has ult, who doesn't have ult, how far they are away from ult, how much money they have. You know, it tells you everything. This game tells you everything you need to know, which is, which is incredible. It's great because it makes it super easy for you to press tab and look at what's going on compared to other games talking about counter-strike that won't give you that information you have to keep track of that on your own you have to be like okay well they had pistols that round maybe they're gonna they're saving oh they had like mac 10s and they had and ump's and they had you know and whatever you know then you can know oh they were on a live buy now i need to keep track of that they're gonna be able to not buy full for the next two rounds we guys should do this we should get aggressive we shouldn't get aggressive we should blah 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 right this game will tell you how they're gonna play just by looking at your economy so here i could see all right what else do we have we have my ult we have cypher ult we have jet knives we have um we're one off of omen ult one off of reina ult the enemy team has they're close to their ults they have silver ult, so we gotta we might have to watch out for that on post plant but I have my ult. So me having my ult, I want to suggest a play. I want to say, hey, can we go A? I have ult. It's a free sight take, right? If KJ's playing on A, she gets suppressed. If anybody's playing on A, they can't use any utility. Generally speaking, KO ult is a really good ult to take a sight with your team. It kind of shuts down everything. All you got to do is shoot the head and then boom, you get a free bomb sight. Anyways, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. so our cypher calmed it. I was going to calm it anyway, so we... Uh, we agree. So now the game plan is, hey, we're going to KO ult A. I asked for one person to come short with me because there's no reason for all of us to be going long. There's no reason for all of us to go long. There should be, whenever you're going to a bomb site, there's two sides to a bomb site. You should be splitting this up. Whenever there's a bomb site, like you should be splitting a bomb site as often as you can. There's no reason in putting five people here and then you guys take the site, right? Yeah, five of you can go long, whatever, boom. But a lot of the time you go take a site, right? You go here, you're getting shot from here, you're getting shot from heaven. Let's just assume heaven smoked off. You're still getting shot. Let's say there's two people on site, right? And then because of none, because none of you went short, now you guys are trying to go out here. You're worrying about these two people, and then boom, you're getting shot in the back because nobody decided to clear short. Or maybe there's two short, and then boom, even more people to shoot you in the back. You know what I mean? Try to make it make sense. Split bomb sites as often as you can. There's a reason that most of the time there's two ways to split a bomb site. You can go through garage. You can go through long. Um, you can go through garage window if you want and take that space. If you're going B, you can go through B and then you could split off and go left and you can go right. You know, try to expand your options because if if all of you go long, think about it. The enemies are just like, oh, they're all long. That's all we have to worry about. This short guy has nothing to worry about. He's just chilling. Boom. But if you split your pressure, let's just say there's no short guy. And then now you're going through here and you're going through here. This guy on the site is having a panic he is panicking because he's getting shot from here. He's getting shot from here. He's getting dumped by utility. He's getting blinded. He's getting stunned. He's getting shock darted. He's getting scanned by a dart. You see what I mean? There's a lot going on for that guy on site. So, you know, split up your pressure a little bit. Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy for your team. Make it easy for you to win the round and secure it. Anyways, we do again the same short knife. Spot nobody there. I ult right after so they can't stall us or do anything. I go to take short here. I clear my corners, right and left clear. I go to flash out. 
boom, flash, I clear right, I clear left, and now, boom, they gave us the bomb site. I'm looking for a dart in case Sova throws it. He doesn't throw it. They smoke me off. I'm looking at my minimap this whole time. Look at my eyes. I'm telling my team that I'm smoked off. The only reason that I'm playing in the smoke right now is because I have a flash. And I know my jet is fighting solo on site and I should be the one to help him. But I am going to be the, I'm going to get his trade instead because I have a flash. And I see my cybers on a flank here. If I swing out of the smoke right now, and for some reason, my jet gets shot in the back and he 180s and I blind him, then we're both screwed. You know what I mean? But if they focus on my jet and then I throw a flash right after, they're blind. They have no idea I was there. I get the free kill. I'm securing the round rather than trying to like accidentally mess up my teammates and make us lose the round. So like this is like some would call this like a kind of baiting, but like I'm getting his trade. Like that's like my intention. It's like a good bait, basically. He gets the kill. They know where he is. I hear the footsteps on his left. I flash. Boom. Bam. And right there, I blinded the KJ and I blinded the Phoenix. My Cypher kills the guy on the right. I killed the KJ. We win the round. Good job. I'm suggesting a play. I suggested a play. I said, hey, do we want to try see this round? My guy says, no, let's default. I said, all right, cool. And then I said, so what defaulting is, for, the, for those of you who don't know, defaulting is basically where you all work the map um, generally like in pairs so you don't like troll or anything. Um, cause if you die on an angle, then you get instantly traded. Um, so what we're doing is defaulting. We're basically just spreading our presence or on the map. So the enemies have no idea where we're really going. I have three people going long right now. I have one going garage and I'm knifing a, I'm knifing a for presence because I've default knifed a every time that we've gone a. So be, by me knifing a, the enemy team says KO knife a, and they might think that we're working the a bomb site, even if we're not, um, and then my jet here is going to be working garage. And then my teammates are going to be working C long. So watch. I throw a knife. They get the pressure on C long. Okay, we get the information. Kami kind of trolled a little bit. It's okay. There was a knife. He should have let the camera peek first. It's normal. So because we're defaulting, they spot three long. They know I knifed A. This Phoenix got caught out because we're defaulting. So we basically get... A free kill. My jet got a or was it my jet got a kill? No, my jet didn't get the kill. Unfortunately, she lost the gunfight. But it forces the enemies to come and push out. And it doesn't force them, but it makes them like more inclined. Like if we're like faking A, somebody that always peaks garage, once they know that, like, oh, they hit KO knife A, they smoked the cross, they darted long. Um, then the person that's playing garage or that's playing C is like, oh, they're going A, and they instantly just push out. And then boom, free kill. Same way right there. Um, Phoenix sees that three guys are long. I just knifed A. He's walking down long thinking that nobody's there, even though we were there. He just happened to lose the gunfight, which is unfortunate. He says 140 on Phoenix. I look at the angle. I hear Phoenix healing. I see my teammates are on C, so I need to go through garage here as fast as I can. What I was doing here was... I'm just walking up because I, I don't want to make my spot known. Teammates are on C. I go to check my flank in case one of them flank, but then I see there's a trip, so I'm good. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm, before I peek an angle, I'm pre-aiming the position that enemies might be at. So here I'm pre-aiming the window. You can see how I take a little pause before I swing and then I peek the angle because I'm trying to prepare myself for this fight. If I'm staring at the floor and then I'm bringing my crosshair up as I peek, if this guy's holding the angle, I'm probably going to die. Whenever you're peeking angles, you need to be able to, you know, take a second before you peek it, pre-aim your crosshair there, swing it, and then boom. So if there was a person there, I might I might have won the gunfight. And then here I see alarm bot, I break it, and I immediately snap back up to that position. I try to run to the side as fast as I can because I see my omens fighting and he needs help getting out along. So I flash out here. I tell him that I'm flashing. I flash out, get the Sova. He gets the guy back sight. I heard one drop right behind me as I pushed out. So I'm mollying this so that when I plant, or I'm mulling this so the guy can't push and I buy myself time to plant. Also, remember, my jet said Phoenix was 140 as well. So I molly it and I stick the plant immediately. I killed a Phoenix because he got in that smoke instantly to flash out. Because I'm, if, had I not mollied that and I instantly tapped the bomb, I would die. Because the Phoenix would flash out, I'm here sticking the bomb, my omen gets blinded, I'm blinded, we're both dead. But because I mollied it, the Phoenix has to either run away or push out 
If he pushes out, he dies to my Molly. And if he pushes out, he dies to my Omen. So regardless, that Phoenix is in a lose-lose situation, unless he goes and plays safe, which would be the smarter thing to do. But he's assuming that I didn't hear him drop behind the window, but I did, and I kill him. Nice. I plant the bomb, and we have no idea where this Omen is. He says to double up, but I'm not really in a position to double up right now. If the Omen is garage, I die because I'm trying to cross. If the Omen is backsight, if the Omen is longs, I die because I am just not in a favorable position right now. So I have to do something. I have to either I have to either push backside, which is what I'm preparing to do. I have to either push backside so I could take space and secure a safer position to fight from, or I have to kind of just run to my omen and double up with him and pray, which is technically the smart thing because in a 2v1, you want to play with your teammate as much as you can. But it's not a smart thing to do if we don't know where the guy is. So my mindset is, okay, I need to take backside here. I need to take backside and then hold that position because now we know that Omen is not backside and then we can focus on garage or we can focus on long. So I go ahead. So he's telling me to go double up with them. And I was like, eh. I was like, I'm going to flash backside. So I go to flash. And then when I went to swing backside, Omen was on the flank. Luckily, my flash blinded him because he was trying to kill me. And then I saw him cross and I hide. So now my omen is in a position to where I, all I have to do here is peek when he gets the contact. Me swinging right now is troll. The omen knows where I am. There's no point in me swinging here. The omen is forced to fight my omen and then fight me after. If I swing right now and give this omen the kill, then all he has to do is take the 1v1 with my omen and we lose the round. So I walk up to the wall as tight as possible. I walk up to the wall as tight as possible here. And I see, on, I'm looking at the mini map the whole time. As soon as my omen gets contact, I swing. And then boom, that is a unwinnable round for omen. Unwinnable, unwinnable for that guy. And we win the round. So we're just making noise here. You can see our cypher lurking. The jet spotted four of us long. And because the jet spotted four of us long, our lurker, Cypher, gets a free kill. Now that he gets the kill, we instantly all rotate, and I'm here prepped for short. Because none of us went short, I'm pre-aiming short in case somebody decided to walk up. Notice how I'm aware of these positions. I'm not just rotating. Oh, my Cypher said to rotate. Knife out. I'm going to book it to the other site. You need to be aware of everything. Every angle where people could be, you need to be aware of it. Otherwise, you're just going to get killed all the time for no fucking reason. Pay attention when you're playing the game. Pay attention when you're playing the game. I'm aware that there could be somebody here. Me taking my knife out and rotating 0.3 seconds faster is not worth it if I just die here. You know what I mean? So here, I take my gun out. Luckily, I see the guy. And we all rotate out. Boom. As soon as I'm in safety, now I'm good to go. Now I can knife out. There's nobody here because my cypher took garage. There's a camera mid. There's a trip right here. There's a thing here. And I see on the mini map, there's Phoenix here, Sova here, Jet here, Omen here. Seaside is free. So I go through garage because it's the fastest way for me to get to Seaside. I pre-aim the window in case one of them dies to go through there. We know the Phoenix is plat. I'm trying to get the kill, but can't really. I plan it for long. We get all the kills. We have no idea where he is. I jump spawn long. I knife long. Okay, now we know he's spawn. So, this is kind of a bad peak technically, but this is kind of an off angle, like low key. So, I crouch and I hold the angle. He wants me to stay alive, but I'm confident I can get the kill. I try to pre fire it. I don't react fast enough. Now, I tell him that I'm going to flash and we don't have to peek, but. My jet, unfortunately, was holding the angle, got pre-fired, dies. And then I wait a couple seconds. I hear him taking footsteps, which means he's pushing me. And I throw a flash and then boom, I kill him. So we silent jump, Omen and I silent jump, but my cypher decides to be super loud. And then the Omen just kills us all because he hurt us. This guy not know how to silent jump? Chat, silent jumping is easy. You press shift and you jump. It's not that hard. You press shift and you jump. Now. Don't be like the cypher. 
Silent jumping is very easy. You press shift, you jump up, and then boom. You land on a, if you land on a surface that's higher, you won't make noise. Boom, silent, 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 right? Silent. You won't make noise here. Won't make noise here. Won't make noise here when you're dropping down, right? I'm holding shift the whole time. All I'm doing is jumping. Boom. 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 That way you guys aren't like that guy. Mid one. I said he likes to flash it. I'm playing anti-flash for Kami. I'm letting Kami scale because the Phoenix has flashed this angle before. So I'm letting Kami scale in case he gets flashed. And then if the, he does get flashed, I could swing and help him out. Kami blinds out. I go to bind the angle for him. This bounces behind the box. We're good. We're out on the site. They're playing retake. They're playing retake. All right. I press tab. So my game plan here was to ult because I press tab as I'm planting. I'm pressing tab to see what ults they have. I see KJ has ult. So as soon as I plant this bomb, I'm going to get my ult, which is going to cancel out KJ ult if she doesn't put it down. But because I wasn't fast enough, as soon as bomb goes down and I ult, she throws it down. And you can hear me complain. I say fuck because that's not what I wanted to happen. And then they defuse the bomb. But they already tapped it. It's going to get defused by the time we get there. So we just saved the guns because we can't win the round. So here, um, because my teammates are making a lot of the lows mid, I get in the smoke here in case one of them decides to push. So I'm kind of just holding it. And then one of them did push because we made a lot of noise mid. So naturally, remember, it's as I talked about earlier, guys, where I was like, hey, a lot of the time enemies will like to push you. So there I was getting a free kill because they're all like, oh, they're rotating. They're going A, they're going mid. And then the guy that goes garage is like, oh, I'm going to shoot him in the back of the head because they're so stupid. And then where I'm like, yeah, I'm not that stupid. So I get a free kill. I'm walking backwards. So my teammate has silently walked on A. So I throw a flash garage as to pull the attention towards C or B. Um... And then boom, he gets a free kill on the Sova, and now I can full sprint it. I could just send this shit. I'm a little nervous of getting shot in the back here, so I'm like trying to like jump around a little bit. And now we can see they had they had two on C because of that flash that I threw. And then there's one late B. So boom. I plan for everything. This can get shot from heaven, from short, from long, from CT. So I, this is a plan for everything. It's important where you plant the bomb. Because we have so much time and so much space on the map. I'm allowed to plant here, but usually you can't really plant here because enemies will be like right on the exit and they're like ready to take the site. But because I saw on the mini map with the cypher roll that two of them were going to be late to the bomb site, I decided to plant for everything because I have the time to plant for everything. And now I can get into a position wherever I want. Defaulting again, I knife garage. I asked my omen to smoke garage so we could take the space here. I'm trying to pre-fire the alarm bot in case it's there. Okay, we spot it. Phoenix Molly's. I'm watching mid because there's no point in two of us watching. There's no there's no point in three of us watching garage here. If one of them walks up mid, we die. So I'm watching mid. We don't have trips. He dies. Phoenix is flash eyes out. So Jet swung. Jet dies. Kami gets the trade. Kami swings out, goes to pushing garage, gets flashed, dies by the Phoenix. I swing, I get the trade. Notice how it's like clockwork, right? We're like trading back to back. You never want to just have your teammates die for no reason. You want to get the trade as often as you can, as much as you can. That's why you should do things usually in a pair. That way, if you fuck up, your teammate can make you not fuck up. You know what I mean? By trading you. If you don't know what trading is, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, you die, your teammate gets the kill. That's your trade. You're one for one. You know, does that make sense? In case you don't know what that means. Trade. One for one. You trade teammates. You trade lives. I tap the bomb in case one of them's long because we don't know where Omen is. My, my Omen does spot him long. I swear I just saw one long. I get the kill. I break the dart. On one. I go to swing garage for info. Okay, we get the guy CT. They say the last guy's the op here. We don't know where he is. Last guy's long. So, last guy's long. I flash from back sight. Boom. That guy's blind, right? I cross over here. Because now that I gave away my position of me being back sight, he's looking in that direction. So I walk up here. 
I hear him. He throws two smokes. He runs up and then he cuts his noise. He starts shift walking. So my plan was to push that smoke, but because he cuts his noise, I imagine that he's either going to push the smoke and try to kill me or he's going to just like wait for me to peek into him. So I back off. I give him the respect and then I wait because all I have to do is wait here for him to go peek the angle. Um, but I also don't want to be easily clearable. So like what I mean by that is like, so if we look here, so this guy's walking up like this, we can imagine, right? Because I haven't seen him. I'm kind of holding like this angle right here, right? So he has to clear like this. So as he's clearing, he's, he's holding this, he's holding this, you know, probably the two spots where I could be, I could be here. He doesn't know, but I'm probably going to be in one of these three positions, right? So he has that worry in the back of his head. So as he scales more, he's going to clear garage. He's going to clear this, right? And he's going to keep going out and then he's going to focus his attention back on this. And he clears this angle, right? But because I'm right here, he can't see me. So if he goes here, he clears this and then he clears this and this. By the time he gets here, he's going to bounce back probably to this angle. So I want to swing into him. That way um, I can catch him on a timing when he's holding one of these angles. If that kind of makes sense. You know, you're trying to catch him on a timing. Hopefully I kind of explained that as good as I could. But I don't want to be in a common spot, you know what I mean, to get cleared. If I just sit here, I'm like a sitting duck, you know what I mean? If I kind of force it a little bit, then he doesn't expect it. So I swing into him. You can see he wasn't looking at me at all. At all. I just missed my shot. And then I missed my shot again. And then I died because I suck. I'm sorry. Uh, and I say I'm sorry. You know, hey, everybody whiffs. It happens. I whiffed. My fault. I had the play. But I just whiffed the I just whiffed the shots. The play was good though, and he did barely get it. He got it at point zero eight. So if I just lived for a second longer, we would have won. But yeah. so I'm looking at my mini map as I'm scaling. Chat. A lot of the time, you don't have to be looking at your crosshair. I promise you, you should be looking at your mini map probably like fifty to sixty percent of the game. Maybe even sixty to seventy percent of the game is you looking at your mini map. If I'm being so honest. I'll probably say like 55%. We'll say like 55% of the time that you're playing the game. You should be looking at your map. 55% of the time. Maybe 60. But right now, there's no reason for me to be looking at my crosshair. Because I'm looking at a fucking wall. Okay. And my teammate is in front of me. I see Camry's in front, right? I'm playing anti-flash for him. He blinds out. The whole time I was looking at my mini-map, I'm getting information. I see that there are two people long. Too long. And boom, I hear jet pop knives. Jet just pop knives. Followed by an updraft, which is right there. That's why I looked up at that angle because jets a lot of the time will try to updraft over that wall there and kill people from the opposite, from the little link right here. So that's why I was preeming that. So he said one more long. I saw the flash. I go turn from it. I'm 180ing. I go to clear long again. The guy's still there. I molly him out. Now we know he's right side long. Planted the bomb. I'm sticking the plant. I'm sticking the plant. I'm sticking the plant because I'm pretty sure I have enough time to plant. No point in me canceling here. I get the bomb down. But I know that they're very close to me because I heard them run through the cage. So I need to be like on fucking fire here the second I'm here. So I back up the angle a little bit because if I stay in this position, if I stay in this position where I was, where I planted the bomb, the guy will get to the angle before I do and I won't see him. So let me explain how that works, right? So right here, right? We planted the bomb here, right? On my ping. So these guys are scaling out, right? They're going like this, boom, boom, because they're trying to flood the site because I just planted. They know I stuck it. So if I stay in this position, I'm exposed while I'm still taking my gun out. Because I back up, I buy myself extra time. So this guy has to swing even wider before he gets the angle on me. So I'm, I'm buying myself like a, it's like a safety window. You know what I mean? For me to take my gun out and prepare to fight. If I stay here and I take my gun out, he swings here and he just wall bangs me and I die without even getting a chance to fight back. But because I swing out a little bit, because I walk backwards a little bit, I buy myself time to defend myself. So I walk backwards a little bit and then now I'm swinging in the head. Boom. I get the kill. I hear this guy running up to, I, he's pre-aiming the angle that I was just at, but because I swing into him, it catches him off guard. Boom. Double kill. I'll replay that shit so you guys can see it on like normal time. spawn. Back up, swing, boom, swing, boom. So on pistol round on Haven, it's a good idea to knife 
this little area. So normally when you knife here, it kind of hits everything in this little area. So enemies that push A because barrier drops like right here, um, usually get suppressed. So you get that early information. And because you're playing that rotate position, you're allowed to either, if you get a scan, you just instantly go from B and you go there. If you don't get a scan, a lot of the time, you could just imagine that they're going C. So you could just boom, bounce over to C and help your guy on C. So that's why playing B on pistol round on KO is very good. Playing B on KO in general is very good. Um, but this is for like solo initiator. Sometimes your teammate, like a Sova, will be playing long a lot of the time and they will dart here or sorry, they'll bounce the dart and it'll go like right over here somewhere or it'll bounce on the door frame and scan everything. So just look at your team comp. Don't always default throw this knife. Um, just if you are the only initiator and you need the information early, your job as initiator is to gather information, right? As your ding. You gather information and then you help your team get the kills on the info spots with flashes, with prowlers, with a suck, with whatever. You make the kills easy for your team once you know where they are. That's like the whole initiator thing. But information. Information is important. Anyways, so yeah, we throw the knife for early information. Um, like I said, don't default throw this. If you have a Sova and he's darting long, you need to not throw it because then you're just double stacking utility. And now when they take the bomb site, you have nothing to figure out where people are. You have no information. But if your Sova darts it and then he gets a scan, you know, four scans. Now when you rotate here, you can instead, maybe you throw a knife right here. And then boom, anybody that's pushing short gets suppressed. They can't flash out. They can't smoke. They can't do this. They can't do that. See what I mean? Because we didn't double stack utility. So be aware of that. Don't just autopilot throw this knife every round because judgment said, hey, I need to throw this knife. No, I didn't say to throw that knife, motherfucker. I said to pay attention to what's going on. Anyways, yeah. Instantly, as I knife, I'm rotating towards C in case it doesn't get a scan. And then he says C long. Now I'm instantly on C and I'm able to help my Cypher. I break the dart and I kind of bounce off a little bit. My jet runs on. I'm playing anti-flash. I see the Phoenix run on, so I'm pre firing the angle. Default. One default. I'm playing anti-flash. I don't want to get blinded here. Garage one. Two inside garage. Two on garage. Kami and I are waiting. Default. He blinds. The Omen blashes default. We get to run out. Boom, free kill. Boom, kill. Notice how we all play together there. If I run out here and I swing and I die, it makes it easier for the team to win the round because I'm playing waiting for my teammates. I'm sitting here waiting for my teammates to all get here. We're able to coordinatingly do a play where Omen blinds all of default and then three of us are able to push this guy solo. Boom, free kill. And then boom, another free kill. And then boom, another free kill. All because I'm waiting. Don't just run out and do stuff on your own. Try to play with your teammates as much as you can. Sometimes there are situations where you do have to do plays on your own, but for the most part, you should be playing with your teammates. It is a team-based game. So, second round, you won pistol round. Congratulations. Second round, you need to spend all of your money. Not literally, but you need to be you need to be buying. You need to be buying. If you lose second round after you won pistol round, what the hell are you doing? Listen. Second round, you need to be buying full you need to buy Spectre, full shield, Stinger, full shield, Marshall, full shield, full utility, full everything. You need to be buying. You need to win this round. You need to you need to smoke them this round. They have pistols. I buy the Sheriff. I am a Radiant player with 77% headshot accuracy on the Sheriff. That is why I buy the Sheriff. You probably should stick to a Spectre or a Stinger or a whatever, a Marshall, that one shot body shots, that, you know, stuff like that, that's easier to get kills with. I buy Sheriff because I'm very, 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 very comfortable with the Sheriff. I will peek an op with the Sheriff because that's how confident I am with my Sheriff aim. I don't want you guys to go, oh, Judgment buys a Sheriff from the second round. Let me go buy a Sheriff because Judgment did it. No, don't do that. You're going to start losing rounds. You're going to lose games that you should be winning. I just do it because I'm comfortable with it. Just so you guys know, because you're going to see here that I have a Sheriff full armor, full utility. Yeah, you play, you play here, I'll play. But generally speaking, you should be getting a Spectre and a Stinger and a Marshall and whatever. So I knife there again. I get the scan. But I have three guys on A right now. So there's no reason for me to go bounce over to A 
when I scan four and they have a lurker, aka Omen, who's lurking, who didn't get scanned, there's no reason for me to go rotate to A right now. I have three guys on A. All I'm doing here is waiting on B. Garage is tripped. My cypher has C. I have B on lock. I'm watching this in case Omen TPs past trip. And if he TPs garage, then cypher or I will hear it. Right there. We kill everybody. Bomb is down long. My cypher is walking out garage. C has been watched this whole time. The only place that this guy could be most likely is mid. So I comment. I said he could be up mid. I don't know. He's probably waiting on the trip. And then boom. He was waiting. My cypher whiffed. He gets the kill. And then boom. I get the specter for my teammate. If you do buy Deagle, get the specters, get the phantoms, whatever guns, so you can drop them. I give it to my cypher. And boom. So I'm in a 4v1 retake situation. I probably don't win this round, but I'm going to try to take as many guns as I can. I knife close. I wait. Watch what I do. Because I feel like it's little things like this that make a little bit of a difference. So right here, gun out. I'm prepped on this angle because they probably push my spawn. I'm assuming. I'm pre-aiming. Nothing, right? Knife out. I'm behind cover. Throw knife. Behind cover again. Wait for my gun to get out. Now I swing again. Notice how I'm safe every time I'm using utility. I'm never exposed. I'm always safe when I'm using it. Then Phoenix swings. I pre-fire. I move a little bit. I kill him. I pre-aim heaven. Pre-aim this. I hear them really close to me. I pre-fire the angle. Nobody's there. I swing a little bit more. They're double holding. I die. So I prep for my long flash. I get in my little spot. They have a Sova, so I'm pre-aiming common dart spots. This is a very common dart that people throw. I knife it. Okay, we get info. Now, you see the guy darted? See? I'm waiting for the Cypher ult to go off. Boom. Three. Alright, 4A. I molly to stall. Unfortunately, I get blinded. Molly to stall for my team to get on site. I get droned out. I run to backside for safety. He walls. I pre-fire. Get a kill. I was very lucky. I'm shift walking around because they don't know where I am. I get the kill. And I left a shot. Unfortunately, I left. He gets the kill. Good job. Alright, so. We are in a retake situation. So, Omen's like, I can flash. I can flash. And I'm like, hold on. Like, let's not go crazy here. Because if Omen throws blind right now, none of us are in a position to push off of this. So, we're waiting for them to get the bomb down. We're waiting, we're waiting. Unfortunately, that guy dies. I ult. Omen blinds. Now we're able to, like, actually peek. He kills the Phoenix in the corner, which I was going to molly it. But now I don't have to molly it because he's dead. So, now I'm scaling. I'm trying to help my team. This guy plays an off angle. Kills me because I was pre-aiming top plat. Unfortunately, we lose the round. But me telling him to wait was a good idea. That way we could retake a little bit better. Um, it was just unfortunate that that guy played an off angle, caught me, and then yeah. What an angle. You can even see me pre-aiming. <laughs> you can even see me pre-aiming top plat, right? Like aiming here, and then I'm kind of just like fast clearing it. But uh, yeah. Plat. So we swapped the sights up a little bit because I was like, <laughs> sorry. We swapped the sights up a little bit because I'm like, Yo, A side is not looking good for us right now. Like, we can't hold it. Can we get Cypher over there? Um, we got Cypher over there. We got me over here for information. Um, because their A take is very good. They have Omen Paranoia. They have Phoenix Flashes. They have Jet Dashes. They have Sova Darts. They have Shock Darts. They have a very good A take. So having Cypher on A is a little bit better. So you can play Kill Trips on site. And then we just win. So, I knife for info. Leave. We don't get info. They dashed up short. We got the info. I'm rotating. So, uh, Phoenix ulted. And my omen dies instantly. Which is very, very bad. Very, very bad. Because all omen has to do here is hide. All omen has to do here is hide. He's got two kill trips. He's got one for mid site and he's got one for there. All omen has to do is hide. Unfortunately, he dies. Which is very, very bad. Yo, bro. I need you to live, bro. Which is why my cypher says I need you to live. Because now we have to retake and it's very difficult. Guys, if you guys are playing a bomb site, A, B, or C, you should not be dying instantly. Um, 
I mean, it really just depends on what's going on, but you want to live as long as possible. If you want to have the most impact on your rounds, you should be alive pretty often. Now, that doesn't mean bait your fucking teammates and be an idiot, but like, you know, you'd be smart about it. So, Cypher has a kill trip for me right here, which me, what a kill trip is, is basically, we don't got to peek off this unless somebody hits it. And then as soon as somebody hits it, he pops the cage, I swing, I get a free kill, 100%. And he also, has, he also has to walk up with a camera right here. So I have no reason to peek this because if these guys hear the trip and they walk up and they swing out to here, me swinging it, I just die. You know what I mean? But if I just wait for them to go, pops the cage, then it's a free kill. There's no point in me peeking it if he's got, you know, he's got the setup here. I jump spot. That's fine. There's a difference between a jump spot and a peek. If I jump spot, I get the information. If I peek, I risk myself dying. You will not die on a jump spot 99% of the time. If you do it properly, they haven't made noise anywhere on the map, so I want to knife something to get information. So I get up, I get ready to knife. Fine. Gotta walk down B. Gotta walk down to B. Phoenix wall B. Phoenix wall B. Phoenix wall B. Because we have B completely open. Heard one A. They smoke the site, and then boom. I see your dart. So I hear them run out. He doesn't know I'm here. I gotta hold the angle. I get the kill. I try to back out to wait for my teammates. See a guy default. I got a flash. I'm in smokes it. Bad timing. TP'd on left side. Gets the kill. Nice. He has ult. I got a knife. Knife gives me information. We know he's short. Boom. Alright, now we're in overtime. Jet asked me to flash long, so I flash it for him. Boom. Bing. All right. Break the dart. Upper kills a short. I try to get on the angle in case he peeks it again. And I short for info again. Nobody's close. Let's me take space. I'm trying to scale as fast as I can. I'm blind. My jet gets three. Wait, my jet gets four. This jet pulled a miracle with all these kills. I'm just saying he was one before on site and he killed them all. But yeah, I go to plant here. He nades me. I go to hide. And I didn't think the nade went out all the way to the side of the box here. So I get cooked for a lot more damage than I should have. Um, but I still managed to plant in a safe spot. We know his CT, so I throw a flash in case he's out because he hasn't made noise. So I throw a flash in case he's like out on the right over here. And then I cross over. And then I spot him and I get the kill. The reason I'm trying to cross over here is because I don't want to sit default because I'm trying to play off my jet. So if I get to cross over to graffiti and I play this angle, then Jet and I could just play a crossfire um, right here. Here, uh, here, and here. Boom, boom. The second my jet gets contact, or the second I, sorry, the second I get contact, my jet just swings and shoots him in the back. As soon as she swings, I get contact. If I die, jet shoots him in the back, free kill. Another situation of that crossfire coming into play. Talked about that before. All right, so Cypher has his setup on A. I am chill to just kind of roam. I hear them go B. They're rushing B, so I throw a knife so they can't use util. They're on the site. I ping the minimap. I ping the minimap here. That way I can know where to throw my molly. Um, unfortunately, I pinged in the wrong spot. I pinged in the corner here. Whenever you're throwing mollies and stuff, ping like the middle of the doorway so it doesn't bounce off walls like that. Um, I'm against the kill. Backside die dies. I'm waiting. I flash out. I called it. Boom. We win the round. And then, yeah, we win the game just like that. And yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Bye-bye.